guys, welcome to Your Best Interviews. My name is Eric Smith. Thank you so much for spending the time here with me. I know that there's a lot of places that you can go to get this information, so I appreciate you spending it here with me. Uh, today, what I wanna talk about is just the top three things that people trip up on in the interview and ultimately get themselves removed from a hiring process. So there's a lot of things, right, that could take you out of the interview process, but the number three top things that happen most often in these interviews that people are just unaware of. Um, I'm gonna start with number one, probably the biggest one is not practicing. So not preparing correctly. So a lot of people prepare for interviews, but they don't over prepare for interviews. And the reason they don't is because it's really uncomfortable. Preparing for interviews is uncomfortable. Um, it's not always fun. It's time consuming. And most people look at interviews as something they don't want to do. And so if you don't want to do something, you tend to spend less time on it. And in reality, you should be spending more time. You should be pouring as much time as possible into the interview prep process because if you are fully prepared and you're able to put your best foot forward, the chances of you getting the job that you really want go way, way up. So you have to make sure that you're pouring so much time into the interview process. It's a lot of time up front, but in the in the grand scheme of things or the grand scope, it's really not that much time, right? Because if you end up getting the job that you really want that opens all these doors for your career, it's a very small investment of time for a very long return, right? So you have to make sure that you are pouring your time into preparing, but also preparing correctly. I have another video on how to prepare correctly for the interviews, but just make sure that you're pouring your time into the right places. You're preparing for the right type of questions that are going to come your way and that you are able to put your best foot forward when the actual time comes. You're not getting tripped up um, when these questions come your way. So preparing correctly. That's the number one thing that trips people up is just under preparing for big interviews that could change their entire career track. So don't let that be you. Number two is over talking or talking too much. So this is one that uh, actually is rated as one of the top um, things that disqualifies candidates is just a lack of awareness. So when you get asked a question, um, talking too much or over talking is really just not being aware of kind of when to stop your answer, not being concise with your answer. So it's talking in circles. And I've seen this firsthand in interview processes where I'll ask that first question. So tell me about yourself. And the person will respond for 10 or 15 minutes before stopping. And a lot of the times it's just people get nervous and when they get nervous, they tend to ramble. And so if you're somebody who you know, you tend to ramble or talking a lot is, is normal for you. You need to practice being very, very concise with your answers so that you're, you're consolidating and you're able to get across the points that you want without completely monopolizing the time talking and talking and talking. Um, again, it's one of those things that most uh, hiring managers not candidates for is just a lack of self-awareness and in, in, um, kind of doing run on. So if that's you, and if you're not sure that's you, talk to your friends, ask for feedback, get their impressions. And when you're practicing, time yourself. And if you're going over your allotted time, you know that you need to practice being more concise, right? And so an easy way to do that is just bullet out the points that you wanna talk around and start really trying to get to the point with, you know, along with getting your information across, but you wanna be concise with it. So um, practice talking too much, and then number three is being on time. So that one seems like a no brainer, but you would be surprised at how many people show up late to interviews that disqualify them immediately from the interview process. So there's a couple things you can think about. If you're doing a web uh, interview or an online interview, make sure that you're showing up early, make sure you're testing the link early. The last thing you wanna do is click on the link one minute before you're supposed to actually be in the meeting and realize that you need to download something or realize that your computer it is gonna to have to reboot before you can get into that actual meeting. You wanna test all of this stuff out well in advance. So if you're doing anything online, make sure you've tested everything, that you actually know what your camera looks like, that it's sitting at the right level. Test all these things so that you're not late day of and it's really easy for you to get into the actual interview. If you're going to an in-person interview, you need to make sure that you have got contingency plans, right? So a lot of things can happen. Public transportation can change, your car could break down, there could be an accident on the road. 
There's a lot of different things that could cause you to be late for an interview and you're in control of most of it, right? So, uh, and I don't mean you're in control of what traffic conditions look like. What I'm saying is you're in control of getting to your interview well in advance so that you are contingency planning. You're almost planning for these things to happen and uh, cause you to be late, right? So if you know you've got an interview, maybe your plan is to get close to where you're walking distance to it an hour before the interview. So it means that you're going to leave two hours early to get there, right? So if you do run into some traffic, you're still, you have an hour of buffer, right? And if you get there on time and you're one hour early, that's fine. Plan ahead and go to a coffee shop or sit in your car and practice to yourself. Go for a walk to relieve stress, those things. But you want to make sure that you're getting there with plenty of time. It's always better to be early than late. If you're late, most chance, most of the time you're going to be disqualified from the hiring process. So you need to make sure that you're planning ahead, you're contingency planning for things that could go wrong because if something does go wrong, it's going to remove you from the process to the job that you really want, that you deserve and could set your career up. So make sure you're thinking ahead, planning ahead, testing links ahead of time and make sure that you're giving yourself enough of a buffer so that you're not late to your interviews. All right, guys, those are three. There's a lot more. Hit subscribe, I drop videos every single week, Monday and Wednesday, so two every week. Comment if there's things that you want or other things that you're experiencing or top things that you can think of, comment. Uh, the whole goal here is to help as many people as possible during the interview process, so hit subscribe, comment, and then also check out the links in the bio. I've got an entire interview prep list. If you're watching this because you're going into interviews and want to make sure you're putting your best foot forward, I've got a ton of resources that help you with that, as well as an entire comprehensive course on coaching you with every step in the interview process. So guys, check all of that out. Hit subscribe. I appreciate you being here. Good luck on your next interview.